All right, we are back with an episode of Massacre. Very excited for this one. All credit goes to Simo for inventing the series. But first, do you want to make your Master Duel experience a little bit better? Are you ready to take your Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Play experience to a new level? The Untapped GG Companion is here for you. Use the deck tracker to know exactly what cards you have in your deck and to go over any cards you aren't familiar with yet by hovering over them. It instantly updates when you draw a card and automatically hides if you check your extra deck or graveyard. This is the perfect tool to help you master a new deck. The Untapped GG Companion also lets you import decks directly into the game in seconds. Copy any YDK or YDKE deck string, create a new deck in game, click the Start Auto Import button, and let us take the wheel. Once the duel is over, check your win rate on your personal stats page. Brag among your friends and share your deck so they can import them into the game too. Start your path to master today by downloading the Untapped GG Companion at ygom.untapped.gg. All right, we're back. Uh, so there's a lot of changes that I'm making to the deck and a variety of things. So first of all, let's go check out the deck. So first right here, you can see we've got actually two decks. We've got Credit Simo 1 and Credit Simo 2. I actually think I'm going to change the deck up a little bit. So this is Credit Simo 2. Uh, basically what this deck is, it, this is a warrior dragon deck. It is all warriors, all dragon for the most part. I've cut a lot of the cards like Sonic Chick and stuff like that. Uh, uh, ex except for our like outrageously powerful cards like Cubic Seed and Rocks Ro uh, yeah, Except for like Cubic Seed, the majority of cards that were not warriors or dragons have been cut. Um, you know, obviously Vijam, Barrier Statue, stuff like that. So we've changed the deck. This is all Warriors Dragons. The reason I did this is because we pulled the Cataclysm, which is like an Icarus attack for Dragons, Tribute Dragon, pop two cards. And then on top of that, uh, we also, is this a Warrior? No, this is Psychic. Somebody was saying this was really good because it can, uh, once per turn, uh, this will allow you to target a monster and flip it face down, which is honestly pretty good. So we might play this obviously not in this version uh but in the other version of the deck uh, and then also we pulled the dragon made tiding which is also return a dragon to our hand and then return a card our opponent controls to his, their hand uh both of these like this is one way to play the deck i think and i've just built this because we really are we need to kind of brainstorm and and play decks that are a little more themed than than not themed and then of course we've got um a few other dragons we have a lot of dragons like nocto vision that, that are just we're just waiting for a way to summon a dark dragon outside of like vice dragon and iron dragon uh if we could just summon a dark dragon consistently like with an extra deck monster then we can start playing this because this is actually really good this has like every single effect on this card is good uh but we just have no way to implement it to implement it into our deck uh, but let's go check out the other deck all right this is deck number one as far as our old deck i am going to be changing a few things out um some of these cards are good but honestly great angus hasn't been coming up quite as much as i would like it to uh yeah it's, it hasn't been coming up as much like yeah it technically is searchable but it hasn't really come up as much and i would like for it to be i wish we had a warrior that was, was decent stats uh but i'm going to be replacing a few cards so uh, arm dragons really hasn't been come up coming up like at all for us there's a few cards that just in our classic deck have not been coming up whatsoever for us so i think we're going to be replacing some of those uh classic cards that haven't um i'm probably going to replace the great angus for now uh with the cosmo good witch just because it's better and yes it is technically great angus is searchable like but we have like nothing to do with it unfortunately it is searchable with the uh magic key but we haven't even ever summoned this so it doesn't even matter um so i'm definitely replacing that the good witch seems like a good card to play and then jurai gumul is another one that a lot of people were telling me to play initially when i pulled it i was like yeah i should play because it is 2200 attack and it's stronger than most of the monsters we have uh but at the same time it's like while it is 200 you know i don't want to attack and lose half my life points especially with some of the duels against the not so good decks are so close i think we replace bell flame for now with this one i don't even know which deck to play our classic control deck or our newer our newer warrior dragon deck i think i'm going to go for now with the warrior dragon deck and another goal of mine today is just to limit misplays a lot of the reason why i misplay and i'm taking a few messages against it is just that i just straight up don't read like i'm not going to lie i don't read the cards or i skim through the card and i don't see it all the way through um i'm going to try to limit that because in my regular account i can afford to not read everything because as i'm comboing off there's so the timer is just going off and it doesn't matter i don't have to read i'll just learn from my mistakes the next time but on here i can't really afford i have no excuse not to read because our plays take like 
eight seconds to do, right? We just summon a monster, set a card, like that's it. Like I have 300 seconds in that timer to read as many cards as I want to. So why I'm reading, I don't even know. Uh, I really need to start reading these cards more thoroughly, but this is the deck for now. Uh, let's go play. I think for now, until we kind of beef up uh, the second deck, I think I'm going to go ahead and just play, continue to play with the first deck. Let's go get into a game. Uh, before we get into a game, somebody was mentioning to uh, try a new strategy, which I think I'm actually going to try. It's not a bad strategy. Uh, somebody told me to use accessories to try to fool our opponents into thinking that we're playing a better deck than we actually are. And I thought that was actually a pretty good idea. So they told me to use uh, certain sleeves. Uh, which are the, they told me to use the Mikanko sleeves. So we're going to buy probably a bunch of random stuff just because we have more gems than we could ever do anything with. So we're going to buy the Mikanko sleeves because if our opponent, you know, has the, if we go second, they might think we're playing Mikanko. That's cool. Uh, and then a few other things that we're going to change around here. What's a cool mate? Uh, something that a Mikanko player would have. There we go. Divine Incarnate. We'll get that thing right there. And then for our... Do we get a frame? I think some of the frames look cool, right? What's, what's a cool frame? Fire frame. This looks pretty cool. I don't know. Let me let me make sure we get the right one. Honestly, I like the way the fire one looks. So I'll get it. I'll get the fire frame. We'll get these uh, twin twister things. Cause I think they look pretty awesome. And let's see. Up here. A lot of these fields are on sale right now. A lot of them look cool. Honestly, I think the coolest one was always the Vivid Abyssal Waters. A Glacial World looks pretty cool too, but I honestly think this water one looks really, really awesome. So I'm going to get the water one. And that's great. The great thing about this account is gems are like irrelevant. Like the, we're, like we'd have to win 57 games to put a dent into our gems, uh, which we're obviously not going to do in one episode. Let's go apply all this stuff. All right, so we're going first here. I win the coin flip. Uh, the hand is... Not the worst, not the best. I'm going to summon the Jirai Gumo. And I'm going to set the Elements and the Dimension Slice. And I think that's enough for, for yeah, Jirai Gumo, Dimension Slice, Battle of the Elements. I think that's enough. Uh, depending on what he's playing, Battle of the Elements can do quite a bit. But Dimension Slice, unfortunately, is not going to trigger with Parry Knights because this activates in, yeah, inflicts battle damage. That'll activate in damage step. So unfortunately, that's not going to go off for us. Our dual field looks. Oof, this is not good. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not beating that. That deck is just a little too constructed. All right, this is our second game. Let's see what we get. Our hand's not bad at all, actually. Our hand's actually quite nice. We have Vigion, Mask of Darkness, Dark Door. Like we have a lot of stuff going on here that's quite decent. Vigion plus Dark Door, pretty decent combo actually, because they can only attack once, and the only thing they can attack is Vigion. So, depending on what they're playing, that could be pretty good. So, Dark Door. Threatening Roar. Do we even set Threatening Roar? I mean, it's good to chain rather than not, right? Just in case they wipe our back row. Overall, it's not a bad hand at all. We have a lot of attack prevention. Not a very aggressive hand, I'll, I'll say that, but um, definitely not a bad hand. Depending on how much back row removal we, we could win. Now, they do have the Rabbit, and they've got the Asian name, which means it could be Self Decay, but no, it's not Self Decay. I guess, no, This those are Korean letters. Usually when it's Chinese letters, it's usually self-decay. Now, I'll say this right now. This is not looking good already because this looks like just a constructed Galaxy Eyes deck. Galaxy Eyes decks have tons of removal, tons of search power. I don't think this is going to work out for us. Right, I'm not going to lie. I did not see this guy coming. This is a guy we actually have in our extra deck. You, this is a good sign because he should have... There's so many other better monsters for him to summon. Um, for him to summon this is, is actually good to see. Because this card... Like I said, we have this card ourselves. But we have no way to summon it because we don't have enough photons. We have one photon card. We don't have two. So that tells me that this is kind of like a newer player. I'm not going to turn chaining off because that can end very badly for us. I'm obviously going to go into some kind of a rank 8 prime all of this is fine yeah like i said this looks to be a newer a newer rank 8 deck which is good Does you have materials detached okay so i'm definitely going to use the effect of vigion because only he can attack anyway so i might as well just do this 
Like I said, this guy can't attack anyway because he only gets one attack per turn. Mask of Darkness, unfortunately, as of right now, doesn't do anything because we didn't use the uh, Threatening Roar. This seems like a matchup that is, is, is fairly winnable. It seems like a winnable matchup. Um, we just need monster removal, and I think we've got, we've got, we've got some things going on if we get some monster removal. Iron Dragon wouldn't be bad. I could set something here, pop this dude. Uh, he's 2,000, this guy's 2,000, and then we can, we can, we can go from there. Alright, he seems to be ranking up into something. We'll see what it is. Oh, uh, that's not good for us, because that can actually get rid of the Vigiom. He can destroy the Vigiom right now. He can target any face-up card. Now, he could just choose the Dark Door. Okay, he'll, he'll pick up, yeah, the Vigiom. And next turn, I guess he can get rid of the uh, the Dark Door if he wants to. It is a hard once per turn, though. Now, that is not good, because, unfortunately, it does uh, offer protection for any of these dragons that are, are to be destroyed. Unfortunately, we do have a Threatening Roar Mask of Darkness, so we're definitely going to buy ourselves some more turns, but I'm not going to lie to you, this is not looking like that great for us especially since he can just keep ranking up and destroying our cards yeah this can destroy another card yet again just can pop a face down or a face up card and obviously i can't even chain this because the battle phase is over yeah I'm, I'm gonna look at our draw but based on our draw we, we probably scoop this one up because he's like the problem is he just has too many big monsters on the field right now that we can't we can't do anything about so next turn we just, we just honestly just lose. All right, so now he's got this guy in play, and we can't target any of his light monsters. Cannot target light monsters with card effects. Yep. So we can't target any of his stuff. Yep. That, that's the game. There's nothing that we can do about this. That is the game. All right. So we just won the coin flip. We are going first. We drew the dark door again, and threatening roar again, and mask of darkness again. So our hand is essentially. 60% uh, exactly the same as the last turn duel. I, I don't know what it is with this account, but it's like getting the same hand is just so... just happens so much in this particular account. It's kind of insane. It's like certain cards I literally never draw. I, I, I don't know why, but I never, ever, ever draw There Can Only Be One. I don't know why. I can't explain it. But I just do not draw this card anymore. It's like it, it, it it's like we lost our dual spirit or something. It's like after it's like Wing Karibo when he left Jaden. I, I can't see it. I can't see I, I haven't seen There Can Only Be One for so many games. It's probably been ten games since I've seen that card outside of that one self DK game, which is insane to even consider. Uh, because obviously, you know, you should see it eventually, and then you've got cards that you see every turn. Alright. We've got we're just going to chain it, because why not? And now, the problem is, we can't add it back, because it's going to get banished. It's like a, a perfect counter to what we've got going on here. Uh, yeah, on resolution, it's going to get banished. If he's playing Sky Strikers, I'm going to leave so quickly. I mean, this this looks like it could very well be Sky Strikers. He's got the sleeves, he's got the Upstart Goblin, this. If this is Sky Strikers, I'm yep. Can't stand this deck. Alright, another game here. I believe we just lost the coin flip. We drew our Vigiam in the Cubic Ascension in the same uh, in the same hand, which isn't good because obviously uh, Vigiam needs to be summoned from the deck with Cubic Ascension. So Cubic Ascension is essentially a dead card right now, and then Vigiam is already in the hand, so we don't need to uh, you know we don't need to use it. He seems to be playing Rockets. Which he sent Metal Rocket to the graveyard with Dragon Shrine. I don't understand the point of that. Now he summoned Rocket Caliber to special summon Exploder Rocket. He just wasted three cards and he's got one. <laughs> okay. That's fair. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm just happy. I'm just happy that we don't, you know. Now the question is based on what our opponent's playing, do we just attack over this or do we because I don't want him to set up more too many rockets and then we lose so I think I'm just going to go with the indomitable warrior and I'm going to go to battle because I don't want him to have monsters on field so I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm just going to yeah I have to do this it's mandatory and then I'm going to just set cubic ascension uh, now the reason I'm setting it is because I hope our opponent destroys it 
Um, whether they destroy it or not is, is sort of irrelevant. Um, but, I mean, yeah, we, because it'll allow us to special summon Vigion if we have it in the graveyard. But right now, yeah, things are not looking good. And then, of course, all of the rockets do float when you destroy them. They summon others, and you can summon Silver Rocket, and um, this dude, the, the best rocket of them all, Rocket Tracer. So it doesn't... It sucks for us, but, I mean, there's, there's really nothing else we could have done. Because, we, yeah, we could have set Vigion, but next turn he could have just drawn a rocket and just summoned it. And then he can go into the Link 2s regardless. Uh, but this person doesn't seem to be the most skilled with the deck. Which is good enough for us. These are both tuners, so you cannot go into the tuners. You can go into the Links. A rocket, yeah, they're both tuners. They're, so, it's good for us. We, can't, we don't have to worry about Boreload. If he has it, we don't have to worry about... He has the full 15 card extra deck. We don't have to worry about Boreload or... Uh, what are the other cards? Uh, whatever the other ones are. Boreload or, or Chaos. I don't know why he went into this now. Not last turn. But what, what is good is that we have Santa Claus. So if he does summon some sort of a boss mod... Like if he gets to Boreload Savage... Not Boreload Savage. If he gets to Boreload... Boreal End. We're Okay. Because we have the Santa Claus. And now this is actually kind of concerning. Because he is playing a fairly pure deck. So these two could straight up just be more rocket monsters. Or you could just pop it to go into something else. And he's fusion summoning. So this is interesting. That This is going to summon the uh, rapid trigger. This is going to summon that Boreload. I forget his name. But there's a Boral, um Boreload. Yeah there it is. Fur Boreload Furious Dragon. And this card is actually quite good. Uh, yeah, quick effect, you can target one card you control and one card your opponent controls, destroy them, which is pretty good, and that's a quick effect every single turn, so I'm probably going to Santa Claus over this card, because that is, like I said, that's actually a pretty good effect, and hopefully, yep, yeah, hopefully he popped the exact card I wanted him to pop. Now he's very, very, very low on resources, which is incredibly good for us. Yeah, he's very low on resources, and we're not low on resources, so that is quite good. And I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to try to play a little more aggressively with the Vigion because I haven't been doing that. So I'm going to try to do that soon. Now the problem is that he has this thing. If your opponent controls more monsters than you, you can special summon rocket monsters with different names up to the difference. That's not good for us. Um, we can add that back. That's pointless. I am going to Santa Claus for sure because I, I just, that, this Boreload... Furious Dragon is very tough to deal with. So I'm going to do that. And then the question is, I have two plays here. I can summon Vidjom and then attack into this with Vidjom. And then negate its effect so our opponent doesn't draw. And I'll take 2,500 uh, life points and I'll make it so this trap card is usable. Um, I can do that. Or I think that's probably the best play. And then play number two is Amazon is Amazon is Queen play. Uh, what does this do? Alright, so I think I'm going to go for the slightly longer term play. Like I said, I can summon the Amazon as Queen and just attack over this, but I don't think that's actually the best play. So I'm going to summon the Vidjom, and I'm going to go to battle, and I'm going to attack into the Santa Claus. I'm going to activate the effect of Vidjom to put itself into the back row. So now we're going to negate the Santa Claus so our opponent does not draw. Also, we don't clear their board, so their boot sector launch isn't usable because we're going to have the same amount of monsters um, as they do, so they can't use the second effect of boot sector launch. This is negated, so they don't draw. And then we go to main phase two, and we're going to special summon the Vigion back out in defense mode, and we have the exact same monsters as they do. So the boot sector launch isn't usable. He doesn't get to draw off of the Santa Claus, and this is just kind of sitting here right now. So there, we dealt with we dealt with our, our own kaiju, and and since we um, did battle damage to ourselves, uh, the cubic ascension is now alive. So as long as he doesn't banish the vidjom, vidjom's coming back. So I think overall that was a fairly smart play. Uh, this can get him into Borload, Savage. Uh, that's not good. You know, funny enough, this dude isn't like the worst card ever against. Actually, like how do we? If he makes Boral End, what do we do against Boral End? I don't even know what we do against Boral End. He's making a Link 4. Which is the Boral Sword. Okay. Okay. And he's going to activate to Special Summon from the Graveyard equal to the difference. But he did banish the Furious Dragon, which I'm thankful about. This is not good, the Exploder Rocket Dragon. 
So we take 2,000 damage. Each player takes 2,000 damage. Now if he attacks the Vidjom, it's fine for us. That would have been like the best play he could have possibly made. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to Amazon as queen. I think I'm going to tribute Vidjom because we can bring back Vidjom anytime with Cubic Ascension. I'm going to set tribute set the Amazon as queen. This, yeah, I'm not going to trigger that. So I think, I'm, yes, I'm going to set the uh, tribute set the Amazon as queen right here. And then we have the Cubic Ascension that can come out at any given time. The Cubic Ascension can bring out the Vidjom at any given time. That's the thing about this challenge. Like I said, like I've said before, like you can't make a mistake, but they can make a thousand mistakes and they're still in the lead at all given times. That'll bring back a rapid trigger. That sucks. And then they can rapid trigger again, which will summon another Borload Furious Dragon. Which is really not good. But I don't know if that's really worth it for him at this point because you're giving up a Borload Sword. I don't think it's worth it. I'm not even sure why he does that. Why change it to attack to change it to defense? But I guess, yeah, you get the targeting. You can make us both take 2,000. But now he has two attacks. And this can't be destroyed by battle either way. All of that is pointless. And I now he, we lose attack too, which is really isn't good for us. We really need to figure out a way to deal with this Boral Load Savage. This Boral, Boral Sword. We need to deal with this Boral Sword somehow. I really don't know how to deal with it because honestly, I don't think there's anything that we can really, we can really do. Like it's not like that great of a card. Uh, can't be destroyed by battle, but we weren't gonna destroy this thing by battle anyway. It's like it's it's not that great of a card in this situation for him. Uh, but we do need to out it somehow before we keep playing. Yeah, that's not good either. Do we have any trap cards that would even benefit in the graveyard? No, the wheel doesn't matter. Yeah, this isn't the end of the world that he outed this because it um, he sent it to the graveyard with the Magna Rock. It's not the end of the world because we have Vijam to stall some more. And then we have the Dark Resonator to stall some more. So we have uh, plenty of cards that are going to stall and stall and stall. So it doesn't really matter. As far as stalling goes, we, we, we've got it. Oh, he's going to be able to banish three cards. And then we couldn't respond to anything. And that let him banish three cards. But he could have banished... He could have banished the Cubic Ascension, but he didn't. <laughs> but like, and I, there's nothing I could have done about that. I, could have, I couldn't have even chained the Cubic Ascension. This card is kind of crazy, but... Uh, there's nothing we could have done in response to that. And he just banished the wrong cards. Actually, no. He banished the Cubic... Uh, he banished the... Uh, the Vidjom, which if we were playing a regular constructed cubic deck, we would have just had more copies in the graveyard. But uh, yeah, he essentially killed our, our cubic ascension there, which sucks for us. This duel, I believe, is pretty much over. There's nothing that we can do. I mean, we can stall ourselves a little bit of life points with this wonder one, this wonder wheel, but like that's not going to really help. This duel's pretty much over. And this is going to perfectly defend our life points here because this is, has two attacks, and we're going to we're going to essentially stall for exactly two attacks. Yep, stalled for exactly two attacks. Honestly, this duel, I I, I can't say that I actually like, misplayed. I think I played everything right. They just have, it, and and the crazy thing is I played everything right, and they played everything wrong, and it, they just have a deck that's just better in a lot of ways. So there's nothing we can really do. You can't win them all. The fact that it's close is good enough for me. Yeah, it's just a little too late to the party. Uh, that doesn't really do anything for us. Wonder Wheel doesn't help. Like, this, just a little too late to the party to do something. This, If we had this earlier, it would have been good. But right now, I don't think it really benefits us in any way. Um, yeah, it just doesn't really help us. This guy's always late. You ever notice that? This guy's kind of late to the party every time we need him. Yeah, there's nothing we can do. We, we He got that one. There's nothing we can do about that duel. Yeah, we've had a really, really rough start to this uh, to this episode. Um, 
like this hand i don't even know what i'm supposed to like i guess we summon the hyper hammerhead but let's be real it's like i don't know what they're going to be playing but if it's like halfway competent we just lose he's got an activation on our turn which is already concerning because that more than likely is a maxi dogmatica ecclesia we have a twister and a hyper hammerhead <laughs> i don't yeah, I don't think we win this one. I don't think there's anything. I don't know what he's playing, but most likely it's Dogmatica Invoke shit all, or it's Dogmatica Pure. I don't know what it is, but it's not. It's not usually a winnable matchup. And then that gets returned to the hand, which is actually bad because he gets to search again next turn. Now the good thing is we have no main deck. We have no extra deck cards that we're going to be able to successfully summon. Uh, but I mean, I guess. That is a beneficial aspect to this. I guess we can Jurai Gumo. Enter battle. Hopefully get something off. We have the Twister. If he's playing Dogmatica with the... Uh, he's playing Dogmatica Ritual. We have the Twister for the... I believe it's the, the spell card. The continuous spell card. We'll call heads every time. Uh, and we got heads so we don't lose half our life points for attacking. And then we'll just end here. Uh, the Dogmatica cards, the the if he's playing the Ritual version, they have the Continuous spell that lets them like search three times in one turn. We have the Twister for that if they happen to be playing it. Uh, but this is another. This game seems like another one of those games. It's just it's, it's just going to be a tease uh, because in reality we know that our opponent just has a constructed deck, so automatically their deck is significantly better than our deck. So it's just not going to end very well for us. All right, so they're going to summon out the Dogmatic Ecclesia. They should just be searching punishment, nothing else, because we have no extra deck. But they don't know that. Oh yeah, they are playing the Ritual version. They should be searching the Continuous spell. That's what they actually should be searching. Now fortunately, again, all of their anti-extra deck stuff that Dogmatica has built into their archetype does nothing against this. So at least, at least in that regard, it doesn't really matter. And I think he switch attack or tar two, two face-up monsters. We, they add the attack and put him on one monster. This will become 27. If It baffles me that he has six cards in his hand and this is the best that's happened. Like, I, I can't even imagine what the other stuff is. But I am proud to say that I have not misplayed yet. There's nothing that I did today that's been a misplay. And I think this is actually permanent, right? That, that attack gain is permanent. So we would have to Twister here if we wanted to do something. We don't have any card to add back with the Mask of Darkness. Honestly, I think... I mean, do we even bother, like, Normal Summit? Do we even bother Parallel Twister? Like, it seems like Parallel Twister would be more... We have two plays. We can set this in defense mode and do nothing, or we can activate Parallel Twister, pop this card, and attack for 18, which will put him at 4,000 life points. That Those are our two plays right now. Twister can destroy the Dogmatica card, the continuous one, if he activates it, but honestly, I think he would have activated it if he wanted to already, so I think we just destroy this. And then he has the card in Graveyard probably to protect or something. Yeah, so that gets destroyed. Now we just normal summon, get in for 18, and don't lose, hopefully. He has something in his hand. I Again, I imagine it's a max C, because it, it always, like, asks him to activate it. His hand is probably hand traps, and we're just playing a deck that just does nothing, essentially. So, all with all of his hand traps, he still can't do anything. I said, I didn't want to give up that Twister at all. I really did not want to give up Twister. But I think we just had, we had no choice. His deck is just, it's making me so curious. Like, what could he possibly have? How, how do you have seven cards and none of them are useful? All right, he's going to add the knight again. This one is the one that lets him send a monster from the extra deck, which is really good. Which I imagine is going to be the herald, maybe. And the tis, okay, even better than herald. Yep. And summon the same monster back out. Yeah, there's, no, there's just nothing we can do about this. Again, where's where where's our god card? You know, it's, we have Light Imprisoning Mirror. Where's Light Imprisoning Mirror right now? We have so many cards that are just like... That we just never see. I don't know what it is. You just, you just don't... We don't draw them. Like, I don't know what to say. We just do not draw them. And he did the chain links all wrong. Because he did the, uh, 
Natis chain link two, this chain link one. So he targeted the monster and then he removed the monster he targeted off the board. So this effect didn't even get the resolve. So he didn't even get to gain the attack. He should have done it in the opposite order, but whatever. I'm not here to coach him. This is just terrible. This is just terrible. Like we have a mask of darkness, no traps. What's crazy? I mean, like, like I have no choice but to set that. But like, how many traps do we play in our deck? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten traps. One fourth of our deck is trap cards. Uh, we're eight cards into our deck. One fourth of our deck is trap cards. We haven't seen any trap cards. So this is just mask of darkness. Just does nothing. Any one of these could have been useful for a variety of reasons. We just don't draw any of them, and then we have. A bunch of monsters we don't draw i mean it's just it happens nothing we can do all right is there anything that we can draw that can get us back here like anything at all it's already too late for light imprisoning even though we're playing against a light deck there can only be one can seriously help us but i don't even know if at this point it really does help us and then there's so many cards that we can draw that do nothing and this is this duel's over all right one thing i can certainly say and i'm is that we are not misplaying, uh, but we've just been drawing horrific hands against constructed decks. Um, chose for us to go first. We have a Sonic Chick. No trap cards. We have Again, we play 10 trap cards. We don't draw them. But we draw 5 monsters. Which I understand why we're drawing a lot of monsters, because the majority of our deck is monsters. Like, I get it. But, like, we play 10 trap cards, and we just never see them. It's, it's almost like they're not there. I might as well replace these with monsters, because I, I never see them. Especially this, like we have not seen, we've played at least, I want to say, 15 games and we have not seen there can only be one outside of one game, which is, it, it's mind boggling. Because against this deck, it would have been beautiful. Uh, but thankfully, he seems to have bricked in some capacity. Now I have to be careful here. Yeah, that's not a bad card. All right, so the play, there's a few plays that I can make right now. Uh, this does no battle damage when it attacks directly, so we're not going to do this. We can summon this and attack. We can do a, a few different things. We can go into the Sioux ship. That's what we can actually go into. And I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to set this here. We're going to normal summon. Which one's better? I guess this is stronger, so I'll keep that in hand. I'll summon the light grapher. And then I'm going to special summon the iron dragon next. We could have a maxi, in which case I just enter the battle phase. I'm not even... Yep, just gonna enter the battle phase. Not gonna normal. Not gonna do anything else. Actually, I can chain this right, and then he won't be able to draw. Now, here's the thing: I won't do is I probably won't go into the Sioux ship. Now, I was gonna go into the Sioux ship, but I'm not going to go into the Sioux ship. We played around the Max C. I'm not gonna go into the Sioux ship. That's awesome, and we pop that. So now we can go into the Sioux ship and pop this, but then we risk him drawing. And as of right now, his hand's not that great. So I'm just going to go into the battle phase. I don't want him to draw the extra card. Uh, he's playing a constructed deck, so like drawing any Dragon Maid can really be helpful. Um, it would have been good to you know be able to overlay and pop this card, because this actually does a lot. It lets him target a Dragon Maid monster in the graveyard and recur and stuff like that. Um, and then Dragon Maids, if this card's sent to the grave, you can't target dragon maze that turn so maybe we should have popped this card uh, but there's nothing that we can really do now we did do some decent damage at least we, we I, I i thought we did the play that was best at that time this is not good because if he make goes into the changeover summons the fusion monster we really have not a lot of outs for that i don't know why he's, this is this is like something that you notice about newer players okay that's fine but uh, let's just to finish the thought uh a lot of newer players will set cards before they enter the battle phase or make other plays, which is a really weird thing to do. But I'm, I'm glad we won that one. We really need a pack, like really badly. All right, so we got two legacy packs. Pretty cool. Uh, let's go open them. All right, here we are. Let's open our master pack first. Honestly, our our pulls were horrific last week. So anything at all, I'm excited about. Like our pack, or our pulls were like so, 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 so bad. And that was a uh, that pack had a gold surrounding, so... I'll see what, you know, we actually get. Change any defense position monsters to face up attack position. Flip effects are not activated. Uh, I don't think that this is that good. Okay, so this is our super rare. This is our second Sofa Court card. So Pendulum of the Sofa Courts can't be negated. And then uh, it does some scale stuff with Sofa Court. If this card is normal or special summon, we can add a Sofa Court monster from our deck to our hand. 
that is actually not bad because again we have another sofa cord monster and this is in a certain way it's like you summon it replace it that'd be nice if we had link karibo without a doubt one million percent i would play this but as of right now i don't think i'm going to play this but again if we had link karibo then that would definitely make the deck all right this actually isn't that bad but we don't have enough bujins for it to matter Revendred Evolution is a ritual spell for Vendred monsters. I don't believe we have a Revendred Ritual yet. Gladiator Beast Darius. This is actually the one that we already have. So now we have two copies of Darius and we've got the other dude. But I, I honestly, I took those out and I have, I don't regret taking them out because they are actually really, really, really bricky. Um, and this one lets you special summon. Yeah, when this card summoned... By the effect of Gladiator Beast, you can target Gladiator Beast Monster and Graver Special Summon that target. That effect's not actually that bad. And a, a Darius can't summon itself, so I don't think that's quite good yet. But that, it's good that we have more Gladiator Beasts. Bora the Spear. If we control a, a Blackwing Monster, we can Special Summon this card in defense position. Um, well, we can Special Summon it, period. And if this card battles, it inflicts piercing damage. I actually don't think this is too bad to play because it does do piercing. I guess the only drawback to this card is... And we do have another Blackwing. We have another Blackwing that special summons itself. I believe it's a level 3. So a, a lot of these, a lot of the things about this card, piercing, stuff like that, is actually good about it. But I, I just... I wouldn't cut a warrior to include this card. Uh, piercing is good, but I don't know if it's good enough right now. This is, I believe, a generic rank 3, but it's 4 level 3 Dark Monsters. Which I, I just don't think that we have the capacity to summon four level three dark monsters right now. And then last card, the Victory Viper X03. Alright, so none of these effects are bad. Like these are all decent effects, but this dude is 1200 attack. And I don't see myself doing this under 1200 attack. But this is another playable machine for EMR. Uh, so just looking at this, I think this is more like cards for the future. Darius is a good pull. Uh, Blackwing Bora the Spear is a good pull. Uh, I'd say the pro it is, it's, cool, it's cool that this card um, does piercing and stuff, but I, I just don't think I'm replacing any of the Warriors because I need the Warriors for the expendable die. Uh, for now, I, I don't think anything really changes. All right, so here are Legacy Packs. We do have this. I don't think I'm going to be opening it but this is cool this is the free one that you get just by signing in uh but here we've got the legacy tickets that we got for winning there i uh, will see what actually comes out of these packs the shine never means anything so card number one screech if this card is destroyed send two water monsters from your deck to the graveyard that is mandatory uh this would be good if we had like any water monsters worth sending uh, but right now we don't really have anything worth sending off the top of my head um, Tasuki Knight. Uh, this uh, is actually not bad at all. Like, at all. This is just not a bad card. I'm probably going to play this. It's a warrior, and if your opponent declares an attack while well, you have no cards in your hand, and this card's in the graveyard, you can special summon and the battle phase. I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain that I'm going to play this card. So we, we get a card that is actually playable. It's finally a graveyard effect, other than the... The card that summons Vigiam. So I think this is a playable card. It has less attack than some of our other warriors. But overall I think it's actually rather playable. So Lost Guardian I think is a cool card. Uh, but we don't. We can't really play this. It gains defense equal to the amount of banished rocks. We don't have any rocks that are going to banish. Uh, this requires a dragon monster to be on the field. We do have... We do have that dragon deck that we're building in the background of all of this, but this has an effect to either inflict 800 life points or target a, a monster with 800 or less defense to destroy that. That is extremely specific, so most of the time we're just going to be inflicting 800, and I don't think that actually wins us duels. So out of our legacy packs, we do have the Tsuki Knight, and that is playable. All right, so Tsuki Knight, I am going to be replacing something with Tsuki Knight. Uh, there are a lot of cards here that just serve a purpose, honestly, so I might just take out one copy of the... Zubaba, this Zubaba monster. I think I'm just going to take one copy of that out and add the Tsuki Knight into the deck. Um, this is, is this even summonable? I don't think we even have enough level threes to summon this. No, we don't. Um, so there's no point to even include this. I mean, yes, it's more usable than some of these others, but like, okay, technically I can get rid of the shooting star, but there's always, yeah, screw that. I'll just include that over the shooting star. Maybe we, our opponent gives us a monster in some way. Uh, but yeah, I think this is the deck that is slightly better now 
uh, because the Suki Knight's pretty good. And then, of course, like I said, the second deck is still kind of in the background getting built. It's not quite there yet. Yeah, so we chose to go first. And our hand is, I guess, okay. Because we just set the Tsuki Knight and we set the Light Imprisoning Mirror. Uh, hopefully they're playing a light deck. If they're not playing a light deck, we pretty much lose. Again, this is, I don't know what game this is now that we haven't seen our dual spirit. There can only be one, but we just have not been seeing it. The game does not want us to see it. All right, this will probably not end well for us. This is all, the cheeseburgers are all dark. So I don't think we're going to, we can't beat this deck. I'm sorry, we just can't beat this deck all constructed. We just don't, we don't have the ability to beat that deck yet. Not when our opening's that bad. All right, next game. Um, pretty standard opening with our five monsters. No traps. We'll just set and pass here. There's nothing we can really do other than that. You know what would be... <laughs> it's funny because we have some pendulums. Like, we have some sofa cords and stuff like that. We have, pendu we have sofa cords and I think some DDD monsters. And I think it would be kind of cool to play... And he's playing Cubic... This should be fun. I'm not beating Cubic. Yeah, I'm not beating Cubic. But it, we do have some Pendulums, but I guarantee you, I bet you $1 million, if we play a bunch of Pendulums in our deck, we will never draw this many monsters. We'll draw like one, two monsters every single time. And I bet you he didn't see that coming. I bet you he did not see that coming. Uh, we will put the Cubic Seed back here and negate his effects. So now he doesn't... Put it in the back row, and then we uh, negate his effect so he doesn't uh, burn us for 3,000. Oh, wait. That can't be negated or something? That's weird. Why'd that happen? All right. We have the Dimension Force. Dimension Force is cool, obviously, because it can out this. Maybe we just do that. We activate this. Put this in the back row, and we just end here. Not much else we can do other than that. It, funny enough, we don't really have any outs to his cubic seeds. So if he has a cubic seed, we just kind of lose. Yeah, honestly, with this opening, I just don't see us winning this duel. It's just... Especially when he gets the burnus for 3,000. I don't, I don't see us winning that duel. All right, next game. We won the coin flip, and... We have a pretty good hand. We still don't have... There can only be one. I, I don't know how many games it's been since we've seen there can only be one, but... This isn't a bad hand, so I, I guess it's fine. I will summon this guy out in attack mode. Because we want him to attack it, because we have the power frame. Amazement wheel, cube extension. Not a bad hand at all. Um, it just depends on what he has. If he Obviously, if he's got a back row wipe, we just lose. He's playing Dark Magician. I'd say this is... This is possibly a winnable game. If he gets the circle, we pretty much lose because we have nothing we can really do against circle. So it could be a winnable game, but again, that just depends on if he gets the circle. He put the Chronicle Magician on top, and then, yeah, he put the card on top, and then he's going to set the Eternal Soul, which is going to shuffle his deck, uh, which is completely undid the Chronicle Magician thing. And then obviously this is very good because you can summon Dark Magician directly from the deck. And we have no real way to banish Dark Magician, which sucks. If we had like Call by the Grave or something or DD Crow or, or something, that would be useful. Again, he's just going to do this, but he's going to shuffle his deck again probably in some way. He like uses Soul Servant to put stuff on the top of the deck, but doesn't really benefit now the problem is he has Eternal Soul. And Eternal Soul is just a really, really, really strong card. Unless we have one of our... Our only out for Eternal Soul. Dark Magician, Normal Summon. And now he's going to Special Summon the Dark Magician. Yeah, this is like a really, really good situation for him right now. He's got... The Amazement Wheel doesn't even like help anything. That's the frustration. Because even if we out one of them, he's... Eternal Soul brings back both of them. I think I just power frame and then make my dude 2500. And then he can't do anything about with Dark Magician Girl. But again, we just, we really need to draw an out to, like, our the outs don't matter. We need to draw an out to the 
to the card in the background. We need Twister. That's what we need. So please give me Twister, 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 Twister. Threatening Roar. And nothing here really helps the situation, unfortunately. Uh, back to square one. Can get rid of the Dark Magician. Girl. Back to square one can also get rid of the Dark Magician. Now the problem is... The problem is... If I activate back to square one, he can chain the Eternal Soul, which will make the Dark Magician unaffected. I can also put Dark Magician back on top of the deck, but that doesn't really matter because he can just Tribute Summon the Dark Magician next turn, and then, like, there's nothing. I'm, I'm just discussing things that none of, none of my options really matter. And then if I attack, my monster change to defense, and I have zero defense, so. Honestly, I think we just pass. There's nothing we can do. Honestly, I think we just pass. There's all, all of our options are just unfortunately non existent here. The Eternal Soul, you can activate it, you can add You can add Dark Magic Attack. I we lose. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, that was just that just was unwinnable unfortunately. Our only chance was that twister. All right, we just lost the coin flip. Our opponent made us go first. Uh, we drew the Cosmo Good Witch. Uh, pretty cool in combination with the Big Bang Shot, I think. That's a pretty cool combo there. We got Dark Resonator. Uh, Amazon is Queen. He's, got, he's playing Vanquished, uh, which is currently either the best or second best deck in the game. Um, we're not beating this. So we're going to get out of here. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably... It's tough to say it's between this and Pearly, but it's the two best decks. All right, we just lost a coin flip. Our opponent's going first. Our hand's pretty decent, I'd say. We've got Sonic Chick, back to square one, go Noble Knight Joan. Uh, he's playing Cyber Dragons, which I believe is, we'll see if it's regular Cyber, or maybe he's playing Drytron, actually. I don't even know why I said Cyber Dragon. Yeah, I was right, it's Drytron. Are we gonna beat Drytron? Absolutely not, not with this hand. Not with this hand, not going second. All right, we just lost the coin flip again. Uh, we are going second. This is our first time seeing there can only be one in... It's got to be at least 15 games. First time actually opening with this card. And we're going second, so we're not going to be able to use it the way we want to use it. And by the time we can actually use it, our opponent might actually have something that's better. But he's gonna, he seems to have bricked here um, and drawn nothing good. We have... Yes, Cosmo Good Witch is probably the best card to summon here. We're just going to summon this and attack directly if we can. There Can Only Be One is actually a fairly good card against this deck because they're all machines, if I recall. So, that might be good. It just depends. I think some of them are machines, some of them are not. It would have been good against the millions of Dark Magician decks that we played against and the millions of blue eyes and like every deck that we played today would have been fantastic against uh, for some reason we draw this now let's see what kind of i believe most of them are machines if i remember correctly this card's good every card is this, this archetype's pretty good i wouldn't say it's like broken but it's it's a decent archetype they seem to have bricked from what i can see it's just nice to nice overall we really, really need a pack badly because, like I said, we need something to, like, we, we I want to radically change our game style. Um, I can go into the Sioux ship and pop this card, but, I mean, is that better than, this, this is the same question every single time. Is it better to make the Sioux ship and pop cards, or is it better to um, just attack with the attack on board and then just hopefully our opponent breaks one more turn and we just win the duel? During the main phase, you can normal summon one Rescue Ace monster in addition. You can target four Rescue Ace cards that are in, banished or in your graveyard. Shuffle them to the deck and draw one. Gives them a double normal summon, which I don't think is actually that good, especially with there can only be one on the board. I don't actually think that that's that beneficial, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter the battle phase and attack twice. Try to do as much damage as possible, and again, hopefully our opponent just um, breaks one more turn and we can win the duel. 
I don't know what they have, but this would probably be best. And he's gonna lose attack, sure. And then we just pass here again. The uh, I'm saving the light imprisoning because if Joan dies, I can discard this and get this back in hand. That way, it's not completely dead against an all fire deck. The last time we played against this deck, we got absolutely destroyed. We drew barrier statue, the fire barrier statue. Raigeki. Yeah, I, I mean, nothing we can do there. So whether we have, we would have summoned Suship or not, it's fine. Nothing we can do. I am going to activate the Joan. This is exactly what I planned for, so I'm going to discard the Light Imprisoning Mirror and add back Joan if I can. I never actually did get to use the Good Witch uh, book effect. This is like a better Sukiyomi. It's like at 500 life points, you can Sukiyomi every single turn. All right, we do not have 2,800 damage, so... Zubaba... Zubaba Knight. I think we just, again... Yeah, I think we just summoned Joan because it at least it floats, so yes, it's sixteen hundred rather than eighteen, but at least it floats. I don't know how badly our opponent bricked that on turn four they still have nothing. So they could just have all like hand traps and like call by the grave and whatever else people have when they brick. I don't even know what obviously not Harpy's Feather Duster because he would have activated it by now. Because this deck doesn't require a lot of starters to be good. Plus he has the field spell. So I, I imagine he's probably sitting on like some big uh, some big rescue ace monsters that are preventing him from playing. Yeah, he's going to do the double normal summon. This is a machine, right? That's oh, a warrior, of course. We played 3 million duels. 3 million duels where uh, we're call where just activating there can only be one would have 1 million percent won us the duel. And then finally... Finally, we play against the deck and draw there can only be one and we're going second and we play against the deck that it's machines and warriors So we can't even uh, use the deck the way we want to I mean we can't even use the card the way we want to unfortunately that just really really sucks now I can lock him into these two I think the rest of the archetype is either machine or warrior. So I guess that's usable, but it, it does suck that It does suck that of course that happens and I, I have no way to really deal 1,200 damage right now out of nowhere. Nothing that I can really... Uh, this is no point to really do that. I, mean, I guess we can just do it just to lock... Just continue have the uh, this in Graveyard. Because technically this does more because at least it can keep bringing itself back. Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. I think this is where the duel just swings into the other direction and we just lose. We have no way to really inflict 1200 life points. Twister. Yeah, that doesn't really help anything. Guess we just summon Dark Resonator, set Twister, and pass turn. Nothing we can do here. It, it always feels like we're, we come so close and then we just fail. It's like duels like this, they're just so infuriating. Up here activates another copy of the field spell that doesn't really matter in any way. And I guess he puts Rescue Ace uh, cards in the graveyard so he can eventually activate the effect. And then it's unaffected by your opponent's monster effects, can't be destroyed, that's fine. Yeah, the Dark Resonator is going to buy us some time, which is good. And then obviously now it gets destroyed. Yep, and we lose that. Power Frame is possibly a good card for us. It sucks that he gains attack every time, yeah, when our opponent controls a monster. His opponent controls a monster, which is us. He gains 500 attack. Power Frame isn't, like, a bad card by any means, but it's just I don't think it really benefits us. Because, like, yeah, we're going to be able to negate one attack, but then the next attack will just go through just fine. So he has two machines. Finally, we have there can only be one, which will get rid of one of the machines. Finally. Unless he has some kind of a counter trap, in which case, that doesn't really matter. But this might be good for us. This, this might turn the tides of battle. And that is a quick play. There's nothing I can do about that. He's going to add back the machine monster. He should have added back the warrior or wherever it is. 
I mean, he's already normal summoned. I guess this gives him an extra normal summon, but... He can set back at Rescue Ace, Spell or Trap card, which is probably the alert he just activated. Which is fine. This duel is a bit too close. Now, what does this do? Okay, he's going to negate our effects, and our monsters are going to be negate. This thing's going to be negated, which actually helps us, because he's... It, it doesn't matter that he does that. So, it's negated, and he can't attack, which is fine, because it's his turn. So, it will... Its effect doesn't matter, and it... Its attack doesn't matter, because he's attacking me. And then he's going to be able to shuffle back four, draw one. I can actually twister here but i'm not going to twister and the reason i'm not going to twister because i want him to attack me i gain the attack of the full 3000 attack monster and then after i gain the attack of the full 3000 attack monster i can actually it, it would be smart to do that because I, I can either gain the full attack and then next turn attack him but the problem is when i attack i lose attack points so i can do that or i can just twister and then just stop him from drawing and stop him from putting all this stuff back. So I, I think it's fine. We'll just do this this way. I'll let him draw the one card. Either way, it could have been like an intelligent way, but like at least at least it's not a misplay. Like we, we, we're, we're taking a risk based on what's on the field. It's not like I just, oh, I didn't read. Yeah, so when he attacks, we can, we can use the power frame to gain the full attack, which is the 3,000. And then when I pop the... Uh, Hydrant next turn, or the uh, Rescue Ace, Rescue Ace HQ, when I pop that next turn, I'm going to, okay, this is good, so if we just draw a monster, I think we can actually win this duel, if we just draw a monster, okay, I think we can win this then, if he can't summon a monster out of nowhere, I think we win this duel, we're going to go ahead and do the Parallel Twister, send the Dimension Slice, pop the rescue ace engine fire engine imperm in that column man i literally don't have another column i literally don't have another column wait a second wait a second wait a second target one face up spell on the field destroy it can i target this if i get this off the field then this doesn't go through right because this has to remain okay let's try it Twister, yes, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, does this go through, oh my god, I can't believe that went through, that still got negated, it was not in the column anymore, you've got to be kidding me, it literally wasn't even in the column, I don't even know what to say. I, 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 I just don't know what to say. I try to play around it. I try to play around it, man. I try to do the right thing. I try to do it. That sucks. I wasted so many cards. Assuming that play would go through. And I just didn't. That really sucks, man. Like, of all cards, that was an imperm. And the crazy thing is we could not have played around it because that was the only open zone that we had. Oh, of course, we just happened to activate the stupid Joan, which allows him to activate triple tactics thrust. This is just unreal. Into the tactics, but we activated that in the battle phase, so I don't know why he set that into the background. And now he's going to be able to do the warrior and the machine. That sucks. That really, 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 really sucks that that's how that worked out. The, the Twister play, I, I was convinced that that's how that would work out. I can't believe the Twister got... I can't believe that our Parallel Twister got negated for being in the same column as a... For being in the same column as an Infinite Impermanence, despite not being in any column whatsoever. Because it technically wasn't even on the field. Yeah, for the rest of this turn, all spawn trap card effects in that column are negated. It wasn't in the column, it was out of the column. But, I guess, I guess cards resolve in the column that they were activated. There's, there's, there's some rule somewhere that's written down 
that explains why uh, that particular thing was wrong. But again, that wasn't because I misread. That was because I uh, just took a risk on a different kind of play. The, the other play that I could have done is I could have just used the twister to pop the HQ, the rescue ace HQ. I could have just popped this and then I would have dropped his monster by 500 and I could have just attacked him. That was the other play I could have done, but obviously it's too late now. Nothing I can do now. But this really is just... It's like torture, man. Jurai Gumo. He set a monster with a bunch of defense, so... I imagine it's probably... A monster... It's probably this thing. With 2500 defense, and if I attack with Jurai Gumo, I risk losing half my life points to not... <laughs> to actually inflict damage to myself. This duel just should not have gone on for this long. Yeah, see, it's a good thing I didn't attack. I would have risked half my life points to uh, do a bunch of damage to myself. It, it, this is so infuriating because I'm down... I have him down to 1,200 life points and there is nothing that I can do. Just keep drawing stupid monsters that just don't help the situation. Honestly, I don't even know what I... Can I even draw anything that would help? A Big Bang Shot right now would help, but it wouldn't... Honestly, it wouldn't even really help. I don't even know what would help right now. I guess I'll check my next draw, and depending on what my next draw is, I either lose or win. Yep, that leaves the field. Honestly, at this point, I guess we activate this just on the off chance that we get the expendable die, or the unexpected expendable die. So I guess we use the Guardian Angel, uh, Noble Knight Joan. And the next turn, we figure out whether we scoop or not. He has all fires, literally does nothing against him. Yeah, this duel's over. That sucks. That sucks that that play didn't work out the way... Wait. I thought it was going to work out. Nothing we can do there. Nothing we could have done. Alright, so here's the next game. That last game was absolutely devastating. Ugh, nothing we can do about it now, honestly. Obviously, I could have played around the column, but... Who would have thought, right? Yeah, just in general, I should be playing around columns. Our hand's not too... Shabby here, but... I don't think we're winning this duel, if I'm being honest. Uh, he's playing uh, Dino Morphia. This deck is well above our level. I should probably just scoop it up, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see what they have. If they start fusion summoning, I, I, I pretty much scoop. I'm just gonna. It doesn't matter what I really summon. Ooh, actually, I have Jirai Gumo. I'm gonna pay half my life points. That might actually be good against Dino Morphia. If I ever enter the battle phase, that is. Yep, they're going to fusion summon, pay half their life points. And they're going to summon the... I forget her name. It's not Teresia. It's the... Uh, there she goes. The... Uh, her. The one that's zero right now. So now we're going to enter the battle phase. And hopefully... Hopefully... Never mind. Banish for normal tribe. Use the effect. They're going to use the fusion effect. Yeah. And they're, they're going to summon, summon the uh, Rex room. So they paid half their life points to summon out a Rex Rum. He's going to negate our effects, but who cares if he negates our effects? Uh, now we're going to attack this. We're going to hope that we pay half our life points. Uh, I, I didn't think I'd ever say that, but we actually hope that the Jurai Gumo fails us. So hopefully we call it wrong because we're going to try to match him in uh, life point payment. Oh my god, that's so unreal. He negates the Jurai Gumo, so I didn't even have to do the coin flip. <laughs> so the downside of Jurai Gumo never happens. I guess he probably would have negated the Photon Crusher too. That's interesting. And then we've got these two to set, and we pass. This is one of those funny situations where our deck is so bad that it doesn't even matter. This is really good. Pay half your life points, especially some two Dino Morphia monsters. That's really good. Our, life our deck is so terrible... That his floodgate does nothing against us. Uh, you know what deck I really want to play against? I want to play against a barrier stun deck. That deck is actually seeing a lot of play right now. Like a lot, a lot, a lot of play. Uh, because it's actually quite good on Master Duel. I would love to play against that deck. Because the barrier statues don't do anything against us. The uh, Fossil Dyna does nothing against us. Uh, Solemn Strike does nothing against us. None of that stuff does a damn thing against us. I would love to play against the stun deck. They would be so shocked. 
Ghost Bell. Uh-oh, we have the counter. Activate Battle of the Elements. I'm going to force him to send that Ghost Bell to the graveyard. Pay half your life points to negate it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't even know what that Ghost Bell really does in this situation. He can make an 11. Oh, he can make an 11. That's what it can do in this situation. I just realized. Yeah, he could have made an 11 if he didn't pop this. But he's probably going to special summon another one. He's got a million ways to do a million things in this deck. And if he summons the... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to play around this again. If he summons the level 4 and he can make the level 11, what he can make is the one that's unaffected. Um, yeah, he can make the card that is unaffected. That's fine. He can summon, yeah, he can summon the Psychic and Punisher, I believe his name is, the one that's unaffected by like, your life points or something. like. He gains attack points based on the life points. So right now I'm going to try to activate this if I can. Yep, I'm going to activate the Attraction Train. I'm going to... Uh, I can do Rexstrom, but I'm not going to do Rexstrom because... I'm going to do the Teresia because, again, I'm playing around um, him summoning that monster. And I'm going to activate this right away so he can't Synchro Summon. And then he's just stuck on... This is in Defense Mode. This is stuck in Attack Mode. And then this is stuck the way it is, but he can attack over our monster. Oh, I didn't expect that. Oh, <laughs> I just did the math stupidly. There it is, Psychic and Punisher. I didn't even realize you could just do that that way. Well, I tried my best. I mean, in reality, I'm, I'm fighting for my life here, so it doesn't really matter. what. Looking back at it, it doesn't matter what I would have done there, in, in, in what order, because either way, he... Uh, yeah, it, it, like, I, in, in, no matter the order, that the same thing would have happened. So even if I banished the Rex from, he could have brought back the Rex from. Or he would have just synchro summoned with those three, so no... That really wasn't relevant. I, I really there was no way I could have survived that. Let's try to get a win streak going here. That's that's the goal. Because right now things are not looking good. And now he has the Dark Magician Mate and the Slifer, which is telling me that this Light Imprisoning Mirror is probably going to be a useless card, unfortunately. So I think I'm going to set Joan, set Threatening Roar. He has Maxi more than likely in his hand because they keep chaining or at the same time he has the the losing connection thing which which could be nice for us but more than likely it's going to end up just having to play it out but we'll see hopefully he has mahad maybe for the light imprisoning mirror i could have left light imprisoning mirror in my hand to discard for joan but in reality i don't know what he's playing this could just be a mate and he could actually be playing a light deck it's funny because sometimes we'll, we'll, we we play against light decks like Galaxy Eyes and Blue Eyes, and then we won't draw the uh, Light Imprisoning Mirror, and then we'll play against Dark Magician or like like anything else, Kashtira, and then we will draw it. But let's see what he's playing. I I might scoop depending on what it is, just because our hand is really not that great. Oh, Red Eyes. Okay, that's interesting. I'll stick around just because I don't get to play against a lot of Red Eyes. I think Red Eyes is really kind of overshadowed overshadowed by. Dark Magician and um, Blue Eyes, so you don't really get to play as much of it any like at all. Not not anymore, but at all. So why not? I'll play against it. Seems like fun. And then, do I have any outs to anything? Probably. We'll see what he actually summons here. Whether he goes the Red Eyes Fusion route or what. Yep, he searched Red Eyes Fusion. <clears throat> he sent uh, the Gear Freed to the graveyard. Yeah, this is all fine. Nothing we could really do about it. I, I would guess he's probably going to summon Comet Dragon. With the new level 6 and the old regular Red Eyes. By the way, our dual fields look really cool in contrast. We have the water, he has the fire. Cool stuff. Alright, so he's going to summon Slash Dragon. Slash Dragon has a negate, I believe, for targeting. Which... Yeah. You can send an equip card to the graveyard. Negate it. He's going to attack. He's going to target a warrior. Put it back here. Attach it. Looking back, I should have kept this in my hand. But obviously, I have no way of knowing what they're actually going to play. So, you just kind of hope that Light Imprisoning Mirror just steals you a game at this at this point in the, in the challenge. He does have the ability to negate my Cosmo Good Witch. Uh, because obviously it does target. 
There's no point to use that. I still have the Threatening Roar if I want to stall out for a turn. But I don't even know what I could really draw to help me at this point. I imagine there's probably a lot of stuff. Obviously, Vigiom can help. Um, back to the square one targets. Parallel Twister targets. Dark Door is an okay card at this point in it. Uh, Cubic Ascension obviously is good. Cubic Ascension would be good because it would negate him. So that would be good. Amazement Train targets. Expendable Die targets. Um, this is okay. There can only be one is always good. Yeah, so we have a few different cards that we can draw that would help our situation here. Rotting Captain is actually not bad. Does this negate and destroy or just negates? Negate and destroy, so... I think I might Marauding and then Special Summon this out. And then... Next turn I can Karaz if needed, so I'll probably do that. Or I can just Summon the Good Witch and then Summon the Karaz and then target my own cards to destroy them. Yeah, this only negates targeting cards that they control, so I'm, I could probably do that. And I'm playing against the Red Eyes Fang with Chain, which is probably in the back row, so... I'm just going to go ahead and summon, set the Good Witch, and end my turn here. Yeah, more than likely they have a Fang with Chain. So I'm going to go ahead and pass here. Like I said, I don't want to use the Book of Moon effect because it targets, and then he'll just be able to destroy the Cosmo Good Witch, and then I just don't get to do anything. And I don't get the tribute and summon Karaz next turn. But I think what we need to do is draw. Because we do actually have a lot of situ cards that will help us in this situation. But we just don't. We need to dig for Vigiom. We need to dig for uh, the trap that summons Vigiom. Maybe Iron Dragon. Tiam Tiamaton, which I should have played into actually. I should have summoned things in the column. Or activated things in the column that he has. I should have done that. But I go on second, so I, I have no way of knowing. Um... There's a lot of cards I think that can help us significantly here. Dark Door can help us. Uh, either of the cubic cards can help us. A lot of stuff here can help us. So hopefully we can get to this stuff. Alright. He's going to enter the battle phase here. I'm going to activate... It is the battle phase. I'm going to activate the Threatening Roar. So he can't declare attacks. Because I don't want him to declare an attack already, and then, and then it's too late. <laughs> yep, and I'll just pass. I'll just, well, I'll wait for him to pass. So we have the Karaz. Karaz would help a lot of things. I probably should have Marauding Captained and brought out the Good Witch. And then I could have uh, had another card for Karaz. I probably should have done that. But again, I wanted to save the Marauding Captain just in case I draw something like useful to summon. Just just in case, on the off chance, I, I summon something useful. And this is a lot of stuff I can draw, honestly. There's so much stuff that I can draw that is half decent right now. And there's so much stuff that is useless. But Vigiom is definitely good. Hyper Hammerhead can out this dude. Um, Barrier Statue is a little too late to be good. Iron Dragon's good right now. And then we have multiple draws, right? So that's good. Amazon is queen would be not that great. Because if he has the trap card in the back row, the fang with chain, then uh, he can steal our monster. But there's, there's a decent amount of good stuff that we can get. Cubic ascension. See what we get. Oh, shoot. He just scooped out of nowhere. I needed that win. I, he didn't scoop. His connection failed. He walked... Out of the McDonald's. Uh, yeah, we needed that win really badly. The, that that loss against the uh, against the fire deck was just devastating. But let's go. Let's go see what we get. All right, let's open this master pack. I really need something good. It is a guaranteed super. Let's see. Let's see what it is. A lot of people were saying, "Well, the super is not lying to you. It is a guaranteed super." Oof, it's an ultra rare. There might be another super hiding amongst these uh, these cards here. Uh, we don't have any Zephyr cards, so I don't think this is useful. But I didn't read the full thing, and I might end up learning later. Another, another Gladiator Beast card. This is interesting. We're building a little pile. We have three monsters and I think two spawn trap cards. So this might get interesting over a course of time. 
Spriggan's Booty. Face up XE mods. Okay, so this actually isn't that bad because it lets you send this card to the graveyard and activate a great sea, great land, great sand sea, uh, gold Golgana directly from the deck or graveyard. That is good because the uh, gold Golgana is the field spell and it's actually quite good. And we already pulled a card that has fallen of Albaz in its name uh, from the. We pulled it before, the extra deck monster. So if we can string some things together, this might actually be quite good. Alright, this is not one of the more useful you'll send you cards for us. We got a pearly. It's just a straight up pearly. I don't think this is useful right now for us because we don't have enough pearly stuff. This card is interesting. It's actually really good with EMR. Like really good with EMR because it's 2400 original attack. It's, it's getting closer, so we can build a Dragon Warrior deck, or we can build a Machine Warrior deck. Or we can just play just a bunch of good cards. But this actually isn't bad, because when, like, when it declares an attack, it becomes 1,200. But generally, it's a 2,400 attack monster, which is actually quite strong. The problem is, it can't out anything, because it's a fake 2,400 attack but under EMR, this would be really, really good. If we had Skill Drain, oh my god, this would be so good. And this is World Legacy, World Lance. Alright, so this card's effects aren't really that bad. Has a card, it's like an honest effect. If a Link Monster battles, uh, your opponent's monster loses 3,000. That's, like, pretty good. We have no Link Monsters that we can summon yet. Um, so that's not good. And then if a monster special summon from the extra deck, we can special summon a World Legacy token in defense mode. That's the... To, both players fields and that's not like that bad an effect the problem is we have no way to summon this thing i don't know why a sword has 3000 attack why is a sword buried in the water 3000 I, I don't know but overall this card's decent if we had a link monster i would probably play it and then for our ultra rare what could it be what could it be oof oh my god ov raptor jeez okay so right off the bat I'm playing this card because we have the other dinosaur that we can search. So we can normal summon OV Raptor and then we can search our other dinosaur. I'm forgetting his name right now, but we can summon the other dinosaur. So it's a plus one on summon. Plus, if our opponent doesn't know that we're playing, doesn't know what we're playing, he might see us summon this and be like, I'm scooping. I, I can't beat dinosaurs. They're too good. So we might scare our opponent. So this is actually quite good. Like right now, I can play this in my deck, and it's usable. So out of all these cards, the usable card is Soul Eating Ovi Raptor. The Locomotive is a maybe. It's a hard maybe. I guess that if we build a Machine Dragon deck or a Machine Warrior deck, this is going in because of EMR. But right now, maybe we build a Machine Dragon Warrior deck with EMR and the... An expendable die and the dragon made tiding and the uh world legacy guard or dragons like we put all of that stuff in there and then we just put all our good machines warriors and and uh yeah machine machines warriors and dragons all in one big pile and then cut everything else that's that's also a consideration but soul eating over your after i think in our regular deck is definitely getting played so let's go oops whoa there let's go to the tickets these are another two things that I'm like considering opening because uh, they're going to expire and I almost feel bad with them expiring. And most of the cards that we pull out of this aren't even going to be usable, but like I kind of want to open them, but I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Let's open these legacy tickets. So it looks like we didn't get any guaranteed anything right now. We'll see if there's anything good in here that's usable. The performer pal. Okay, so this card's not that great. It scales not that great. Like nothing about it's that great. But we there's a card that we have, the Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. I think it requires like a performance pal and an Odd Eyes card or something like that. And we can use the Dragon Made Fusion spell to summon the Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. So that might be interesting because we now have a performance pal monster. Uh, this is I remember this was from the Chaz pack back in the day. Okay, this is like called by the grave. But our monster has to be destroyed by battle, sent to the graveyard, and then both players get to summon a monster from the graveyard. Which, this is our very, very, very first time that we can actually interact with our graveyard, which is kind of incredible. But I don't... Maybe that's playable. That's actually... That may be playable, actually. Our deck is such a mess that may actually be worth playing. I, I, I will consider it. Golden Flying Fish. You contribute one other fish. 
target one card on the field, destroy it. If this allowed you to attribute itself and pop a card, I would play it. Hero signal, I'm not even going to read that. We already know. We only have one hero, and that is not that great of a hero card. All right, so this is going to be, as somebody told me in the comments, it's going to be a rare or higher. That's what it's going to be, a rare or higher. So a normal rare, not even like a super rare. Rock Ogre Grotto. Okay, that is, we're long past that card. That's not a bad card if we had some level 5s. This is not bad. We have a pretty decent rank 5 extra deck. We have other rank 5s, and now we have this. Uh, so this is actually not bad. I remember uh, in Cyber Dragons, it was actually a pretty decent card to play against Trick Stars back when those two decks like went at each other. But this actually isn't that bad of a card. We just can't use it right now. But let's go to deck building. All right, so the only thing I'm adding for sure is the Soul Eating Oviraptor because he searches the Hyper Hammerhead. Um, Jirai Gumo may be on the cutting list. He's a for, he's always been a for now card, and he, like stat wise, like stat wise, he's okay. But like everything else wise, he doesn't really like work into our deck. I might finally cut the Arm Dragon. He just hasn't been coming up. I'll just cut him. Uh, but everything else has been pretty good. The other card I might add is the. Grave of in in kindling. I don't even know if we really need this, because like I said, it doesn't really like benefit us in any real weird way. Like it's it's such a it's like I don't want our opponent to bring back good cards because we have shitty cards and we're gonna like let them bring back their good cards for the cost of our crappy cards and that's that's my worry with this. Oh, by the way, I'm a bonehead. I I totally forgot. I logged in today and I just claimed everything by accident because I thought it was my other account and I accidentally uh, claimed this link deck. So all of these cards right here in this lane, going from Lost Guardian all the way till. Uh, this thing right here, we can't use any of these cards. These, these are unusable. Like, we're not allowed to use them. Because, obviously, we, we didn't open them in packs. We just... I accidentally claimed them. Like, as much as I would love to use, like, Decode Talker and stuff, I can't use any of those cards. Uh, but, to get back on topic, I don't think we play this. This card is, like, maybe I'll play it later. I'll think about it. Because, uh, usually, we are the first person to lose a monster. But, like, what are we going to summon back? Like, think about it. Like, yeah, that might be good if we summon Vigion back. Or, like, Sonic Chick. Or D Dark Resonator. Or hyper hand actually you know the more i talk about it the more i'm like this is actually a good card all right screw this light imprisoning mirror watch, i'm gonna take it out watch me play something that that is a light deck watch it watch it happen watch me play like maybe this it always happens um i'll, I'll play that i'll play that because technically speaking it should be better but let's go let's go get in a game all right that is a pretty good hand that is a pretty good hand now, the only thing with this is it's when the monster is destroyed by battle, sent to the graveyard. So, technically speaking, it can't be Vijom because Vijom can't be destroyed by battle. So, we're going to set that. Uh, we're going to set that there can only be one. We're going to set this thing. Uh, I don't even know if we should set this because, technically speaking, if they Harpy's Feather Duster, I just lose it and I couldn't activate it anyway. So, I might as well simply leave the field as is. And then we actually drew... There can only be one going first. We drew it. I'm in shock. I'm so happy. I, hopefully they're playing a deck that entirely relies on a single type. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So if they do that, this could be anything. As long as... Please don't be Despia. Please don't be Despia. Please do not be Despia. What is it? 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 Giant... Hey, Trunade. Hey, Trunade, we might be playing against someone on our level. This is promising. Oof. We love to see what we're seeing right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. What does this thing do? I don't know what's going on right now, but I'm happy about what's going on right now. Yep, now his boy, we're putting him in the back row all the way over here. And now he can't attack, and he's negated. I don't, I'm not even going to read this card. <laughs> I'm going to read it real quick before I negate its effects. All right. That is so weird. Can you imagine searching Hatronade? Hey, oh, I think he dodges my effect. Yeah, I think he dodges it. I don't think it's going to get negated. Wow, that's pretty good. So, it, oh, snap. So now our Vidjom is actually stuck in the back row until the end of our turn, which is kind of cool. So I guess it did come up. Uh, on expendable die 
And then we've got the Marauding Captain. So I'm going to go ahead and summon a Marauding Captain, even though we aren't getting value for it. Uh, I'm not going to activate the effect of Vigom because it's negated anyway. B target one Banished Monster, which is going to be the Storm. Uh, nothing we could do there. This is this is a duel that there's 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 something going on here. We're I don't know what they're playing, but things are looking up for us. So what we can do is use the train to move this out of the way and then attack directly, but I don't think that's worth it. So I'm going to set the expendable die, set the grave of enkindling because right now he has nothing in his graveyard. All his monsters are banished. He has, he has some kind of a weird banished deck. I don't know what's going on, but fine with me. He's going to be able to get this not now, but next turn, I believe. So after that, we have to... And, and fortunately, it only set, returns a set cards. Not like there can only be one and stuff. I'm not going to pop that because... I can, I can, yeah, if he attacks over, I'm just going to use the Grave of Enkindling, because right now he has no monsters, which is good for us. Right? Or we can just, I guess we can, hmm. We can let it get destroyed and then Graveyard of Enkindling to bring it back. But like, what is the Graveyard of Enkindling even going to help us? Like, Or we can just save the Graveyard of Enkindling. And use the expendable die, but then the problem with expendable die is that it uh, then he has a monster engrave, so he can bring it back when we do use the captain. Jeez, man, what do I do? I'm gonna let it get destroyed, take the damage. Why couldn't I activate my card? When a monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. Oh, I guess they have to have. They have to have a monster in the graveyard. I thought it was like other like other effects. All right, that kind of sucks. Now we gotta like hope we draw a warrior, and he's gonna keep playing this game with our Vijam, where we can't summon him out. Wow, what a combo! This is an interesting deck we're playing against. By the way, was that a quick effect? The second to banish one? No, it was not a quick effect. All right, I guess we just hope we draw a warrior here. And yeah, we just hope we draw a warrior. Not a warrior, but it's fine. That's actually not bad. That's actually not bad. Yeah, we set this. Do we have any traps engraved? No. This kind of is a weird situation. We can pass and then just there can only be one. Yeah, we can. There can only be one. That way, he doesn't. Uh, then we just end phase here. I'm gonna turn the chaining on. That way, when he adds this thing, I'm gonna immediately. I'm gonna activate the uh, amazement thrill. That way, when we do flip this thing, we actually get value out of it. But this card does activate in two separate chains, so I can't like. Unfortunately, I can't. He can't like uh, activate Hey Trune and I chain that and then chain again. Like it's not the way it works. It's a weird. So he's only going to return two cards, which is fine, I guess. It's fine. He has a really odd deck. I'll say that I've never seen what I'm watching right now, and this is actually really good against him. Like really, really good against him. Yeah, he can't even go anywhere. And now when this thing returns to the field. The uh, amazement thrill ride when it return when the monster returns back, yeah. When the monster returns back to the field, it, it's not going to be able to, so it's going to be put in the graveyard, I believe. So, and he's going to do damage to himself. I don't know what he was thinking there, and we'll get the thrill ride back for free. We had we had one little misplay this game, but again, I'm I'm comfortable with misplays where uh, it it's like a ruling that I'm learning or like a, a new way to use the card. I'm I'm okay with those misplays. See, now it's just going to go back to his graveyard. Um, yeah, so uh, those misplays I'm comfortable with. If, if I like didn't know something, that's fine. The misplays that frustrate me are the ones where uh, I should have known better. Those are the ones that are like terrible. Why is this dude stuck here, actually? Is Vigom stuck here forever now? If this card is treated as a continuous spell card. Oh, they're both fiends. <laughs> Interesting. All right. 
Let's go to battle. Enter battle, attack over this princess. Then we'll set a few things, not a lot. We can't... We'll use this. And the expendable die. Just as I thought, I'm not really... A big fan of this graveyard. The grave of enkindling. Like, it, it really... Like, it's, it's such a weird card. You both have to have monsters in the graveyard. And it has to be destroyed by battle. And it can't change battle positions. Like, there's so many bad aspects to it. This is honestly the weirdest fish deck I've ever seen. I've never played anything quite like it, but it, it is. I think it is cool that we. Uh, he can play around. The there can only be one with the. Uh, with this effect, you tribute a fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep him locked. Out of that, because I don't want him to negate our. There can only be one right now. Was that cost? Fuck! I, I that's why I said yeah. That, this card is kind of like it needs to happen in the same chain. I'm such a moron. It, it needs to happen in the same chain. That's what I mean. I, I should have clicked the uh, on chaining. But uh, it doesn't matter. He literally did the same thing that we would have done anyway. But now he gets to uh, bring there. Like there can only be one. Doesn't really matter. Oh, he didn't even get to bring his monster back, I guess. Yeah, none of that mattered. He, he actually did the exact same thing that we would have done for him. Like, it... Oh, our thing's negated right now. That's perfect. So we can actually summon Vigion back out if we want to. But summoning Vigion back out, and then we just can get rid of the Mask of Darkness later. Imperm. Okay. Fine with me. Um, yeah, fine with me. So we'll just attack with this. And then we'll attack with the Mask of Darkness. And he has... I mean, I could just leave Vigion here in the back row. It's not like... It's like we're dying to... Uh... Yeah, this this has more attack power than Vigion, so I'll just leave it. Because I, I, could, I could have brought the... Uh... The Vigion onto the field. And then, while There Can Only Be One was inactive because it was negated. And then, this turn, on his turn, it would have made me choose to send Mask of Darkness to the graveyard. So I could have done that, but like... I mean, that doesn't really benefit us. Like, who, who cares? Like, this, this has more attack power than Vigium, so I'll just leave it. Every duel is totally different when we draw There Can Only Be One. We, we have, a, like, a, a serious, like, like, a decent ability to beat some really good decks when There Can Only Be One is in play. Do we pop this and draw a card? I think that there's a very good chance that we draw a strong monster because we get to pop and we get to draw. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and Tribute. And more than likely, we're going to draw a Warrior. I could pop this because it's getting him resources every turn. But I'm just going to pop this and I'm going to draw a Warrior, like I said. So that's actually better. We replaced the monster that, that we popped. So we, we Tributed the Warrior and then we drew a Warrior and then we Search. Yeah, it's over. Woo! Another great win. I'm so happy. Man, that just worked out. That was a semi-constructed deck. I'm going to go look at his build because that was actually somewhat interesting. Uh, our card is Wilmy. This is one of the cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! that's really, really expensive. Uh, but it's very, yeah, it's very difficult to find. Alright, this is our opponent's deck. Um, uh, I guess it's just kind of a fish deck. The only thing that, it's like a shark deck. The, it's actually, like, this is one of the better decks that we have beat. This is, like, actually, honestly, a pretty damn good deck. Like, I'm looking at it, this is, like, this is a deck that you would see at the higher tiers. It was actually a goatee deck. And he has a lot of good cards, but I he was just a, he was a, a lot of good cards here, but just kind of played suboptimally. He had the gold sarcophagus. He should have banished one of his goatee cards instead of banishing, you know, and triggered some kind of an effect instead of the giant hey Um I guess he just thought he was playing against some kind of a back row deck. But overall, it's probably one of the best decks that we have actually uh, constructed decks that we have actually beat. This is a legitimately like pretty decent deck. Alright, so this is the only pack that we're opening because we didn't get any legacy packs, so this has to uh, this has to do it for us because like I said, no legacy packs. We got a super. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, and this is another Yosenju card. We've been pulling a lot of Yosenju cards, but not the ones that are actually like useful. So like they're useful in a full Yosenju deck, but not like individually useful. But we've been pulling a lot of Yosenju stuff. This is not bad at all. Fires of Doomsday, it just summons two tokens, and then what we can't, we, they can't be tributed for a tribute summon unless it's a dark monster. And then we can't special summon other monsters the turn you activate this card. This is not bad, 
but we have no like this is a card that might be good later this is like a little scapegoats for us uh but the issue is we don't have any links right now whatsoever that we can make if we had any links whatsoever i would play this card because we can set this on our opponent's end phase activate this summon two tokens and then uh, next turn we go into a link two. fantastic play we have no links whatsoever to do it with um, and then as far as the tribute summon for a dark monster, the only dark monster that we have is the should all should all one That's the only like two tribute big dark monster that we have that's even remotely worth summoning And that's not even worth summoning in our particular deck. So this is a card That not I might play right now because it just blocks two attacks uh, But also it is like in the future probably going to be pretty decent dragon pulse magicians another decent one uh, this is another thing that we just kind of save in the background uh, because right now this has decent stats it's a spell cat like it's decent but in the background is where it's probably going to go it's a scale and it's searchable too which with multiple ways it's searchable with the magic key card and it's searchable with the dragonoids that we have so this is another one to kind of keep in the background think about this is better than our existing uh 1800 attack normal monster that we have which our existing one is the angus Angus beef man and then we've got fires of doomsday is pretty good two cards that are pretty good uh, this is not good for us personally right now deep sea sentry this card isn't bad but just not usable for us right now all right this isn't bad it's a free special summon but this requires you to banish a light or dark monster you can banish one light monster from your hand or graveyard i don't think we actually play that many uh we don't play that many light monsters so that might be a problem the other thing is we don't have the core of chaos to actually make this usable that's another problem that we have here uh, so that's another reason i might not play it for now so this probably is this is a card for the future this is a card for the future this i don't think we're going to be able to do because more like the see the water decks are really high rarity this we might even play today Let's see what we've got here. This is another, uh, if this card is normal, summon special summon one Mecha Phantom Beast token. This would be really good. Again, this would be really good if we had some links. Um, this card's level is increased. Actually, I'm playing this right now. I just realized I'm playing this right now. I just read this card. This is why reading is important. You guys have been telling me read. I'm reading. This is actually really good. So, on normal summon, we get the special summon a token. Um... And then this card's level is increased by all the tokens. That's whatever. And then if we have a token, this card can't be destroyed by battle or by card effect. And then also, uh, once per battle, during the damage step, when this card battles an opponent's monster, we contribute a token, and this thing gains 800 attack. So it's a 1,700 attack monster, but it gains 800 when it when it battles and tributes a token. That is pretty good. It's essentially a 2,500 attack normal summon. It ties with Dark Magician. And it does quite a lot. I'm playing this. And again, this is another card to keep in mind for that machine deck that we're building in the background of all of this. So this might actually end up... We, it might ha happen. It might end up happening where we build the machine dragon... Machine dragon slash warrior deck. It might actually happen. And this is definitely one of the cards that's going in there. Because also, it gains... 800 attack until the end phase until the end of the turn so we attack tribute the token get over something and then activate the emr tribute this and then pop one card i don't i don't remember if emr is original attack or if it's not original attack but either way we get to pop a card afterwards so that's not a bad play let's see what is this super please something good something 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 Woo! we got a royal rare you know what that means guys we don't have a legacy pack but we got a royal rare and remember what I said, if we at, unlock a Royal Rare, if it unlocks a secret pack, guess what we get? We get to open one of that secret pack. That is the rule that finally came up. I was dying. I was like, when is this going to come up? Now, is this usable? No, we don't have any weather cards, but we might actually get some. That is going to be interesting. We get to open our first singular, singular legacy packs, singular legacy packs. So we'll see what we get. That is finally our rule, our, our added rule, finally gets activated let's go open the uh the pack where am i going yeah no legacy tickets right now this i still want to open but we can't we have zero legacy tickets let's see what it is secret pack unlocked we get one these are other things i really want to open all these like really badly i so badly want to open these like I i'm thinking about like if if konami gifts us one new legacy pack like let's say they give us a new secret pack per season like can we open it that, that 
I'm just throwing stuff out there. All right, one single pack of the new secret pack, only if we unlock a royal rare. Remember, this is a exclusive rule here. We got a super. We got a super. Let's see what we get. Again, it's not enough to build an entire deck out of, but it might get us some nice cards. Magma Dragon. Okay, this isn't bad, but we don't have enough worms to do anything with it. Pendulum Moon. All right, this does a ton of stuff for pendulums, but that's about it. It just does a ton of stuff for pendulums, and we don't have enough pendulum things to, uh, to do. Oh my god, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god, I can't believe we got this. This might be useful one day. Um, Alright, so let's break these down one by one. Might as well do it one by one. We've got the Paladin of Storm Dragons. Um, I don't... I think we actually pulled... Did we pull Signet Ritual? Time out. Didn't we actually pull... I think we can actually summon this. And this is pretty good. If this attack... If this card attacks a monster, you can return that monster to the hand. Tribute this and then summon a big Cybers monster. I actually think we pulled the sign at Ritual, so we might actually be able to use this. This is an this is an exciting thing to end the episode on. There's a lot going on here. We got a Royal Rare. We got a lot of cards we can use. We got a Ritual Monster we can use. There's a lot going on. Uh, the Convoy, we actually did pull. Um, we did pull. We have from episode one. We had the Fossil Monster, the Flint Cragger. We have him. I don't remember if on summon or on special summon, he gets to send the fossil, he gets to send one of these from the extra deck. And I don't know if this is one of the ones, uh, it doesn't have an extra, it doesn't have an effect. <laughs> it's it's one of the ones that doesn't have an extra, uh, a graveyard effect, that sucks, but uh, maybe we'll be able to use this in some way. Cupid Force, if all monsters you control are seven 600 defense, minimum one, you can special summon this card from your hand. I don't think we have the cards that work with that. But this is a level, it's a one tribute monster. So you can discard one card, target one light fairy monster. You control one face up monster on the field. And then it, it basically matches the levels. That is, I don't believe that is usable for our purposes. And then for, we got some more canvas cards. But unfortunately, I don't think we have enough of these that are usable to actually do anything with. Uh, so we've got the weathery canvas a rainy a cloudy canvas we've got the rainy canvas and then we've got another sofa court card we have a few sofa court cards here in the background that are actually starting to get somewhat usable we have the sofa cord that searches other sofa cords the normal summon so we can normal summon that and then search this out so we're building a lot of different things in the background that are very very interesting uh, this pack didn't turn out to be like all that great for us but again as far as things going on in the background there's a lot going on in the background so let's just go Check out the deck real quick um, before we end this episode. Let's go take a quick look, take a quick peek. I don't even know what to do. Like I said, the machine, the machine warrior dragon deck that's being constructed in the background is really looking like not so bad of a thing. But in terms of this episode, we got some really cool pulls here at the end. This tether wolf, really nice. Chaos, really nice. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to play the canvases. We got snowy canvas. We've got rainy canvas and cloudy canvas. We got three canvases, none of the monsters. So I, I, I don't think the, the fires of doom, the fires of doomsday is pretty interesting. There's a lot going on in the background. Uh, we've got some fish, but not enough. I'm definitely gonna have to adjust this deck. We got some really cool stuff. So for, we'll, we'll talk about it next time. You guys give me suggestions on what to do. Uh, thank you for watching and have a fantastic day, guys. La 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 la.